Today on Gurus and Game Changers, we have two very special guests. One, Mr. Brandon DeShields, and two, Carolina Cabreja. Welcome, guys. Thank you. It's great to see you guys. What's up? What's up? What's going on? So when we first put together, like, what is this about, right? What is Guru and Game Changers going to be? As soon as we were done writing it out, I said to Stacey, I got a guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We need Seriously. to talk to Brandon 100% because he epitomizes both of those, not only for himself, and we'll get into that, but um, for everybody else, the people you're meeting now, the people, the, game ch the games you're changing for other people are amazing. So let me, let me just start. I'm going to go through your background, your history, yeah. right? To frame it for, for everybody who's, who's listening. So you were born in the general area. You moved, you know, from Delaware to, um, to Pennsylvania, yep. but at 14, you know, talk about obstacles in your life at 14 years old, you found yourself homeless. Yeah, man. <clears throat> at 15, you started dealing drugs to yeah. buy food yeah. for your siblings. Yeah. And you dealt for 10 years. Yeah. Man. In and out of juvie for we, 10 years. We call that a nice run. <laughs> <laughs> we call that a nice run, a 10 year run. But you didn't have a good run. You went up in and out of juvie. Uh, yeah. You know, you know what's interesting about that? Uh, and anyone that I talk to about things like that, I'm like, you know, like a kid that grows up practicing playing basketball and then they make it to the NBA. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's like prison is the NBA of like street culture. Like, cause that's the biggest thing. Thing. That's the only thing to achieve. You'll never be a millionaire in it. Mm -hmm. But most people, they they go there and then they're praised after they go. So it's like you know what you it's put an accomplishment. Up, right. You put all the time in in the streets, building your name up. Yeah. You can go to prison. Yeah. And you come back and everybody loves you for it. Wait. Really? It's a wild thing. Seriously. It's a wild, wild. Thing. Why everybody? Who, who do you mean? The uh, that culture. The people that live within that culture, for sure. Um, I would say, like, one thing that was interesting was that when I was released, uh, they kept me on uh, electronic home monitoring, so uh, uh, house arrest, yeah. for an entire year. And my agent told me one day, he's like, it's not what you did, it's how you did it. He's like, and then you went away without, like, cooperating, without, you know, uh, what people call ratting or snitching. He's like, you went away like that, and we understand that when people come back like that, their name's even bigger. Mm. So wow. I was like, wow, you guys were like looking out for me in a way. You know, I've matured right. so much since being away. I was like, then you guys like really looked out for me. So, so they were like, no, keeping you away from the environment. Yeah, that would have praised you more. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I was on. It so was, you were going to be a bigger deal. It, yeah, when you come back and then people see you in, their, in your back and they're like, hey, man, glad to see your back. Stop by. Come check me out. Right I'm back like, in. I'm like, no. Nah. Wow. Because like, you were already out. Yeah, I was like, I'm yeah. far removed from it. Uh, yeah. Even old friends that would say, like, hey, if you need anything, you know, you can do this. Or if you need any, know anybody that needs yeah. this, I'm like, listen, the easiest thing the best thing you could do for me is anytime i make a post on like a exercise post just repost it that's free nobody's going to go to jail for that yeah. like <laughs> let's do that stuff but um yeah man. how do you why do you think you decided out of all the people in the world why did you decide not to go back into that uh, I'm a person that gets bored doing the same thing all the time. <laughs> Just because you know <laughs> what you're <laughs> doing the same thing all the time. And I realized like I had achieved the most you're going to get from that. Like in my early twenties, uh, I was probably making, I mean, more money. I knew what to do with it. Mm -hmm. wow. Like you can't, you can't put it in your pocket. You know, I brought a large safe and it would just put it in the safe. It, it would come so fast that I didn't even realize I had gotten fake money from a person before. Um, and that, uh, you know, who, who knows what to do with money when you're never taught what to do with money? So it ended up being like a thing where I'm just like storing it. And I was like, you know what? Like, I'm not even going to like ever do anything with this. I can't like become a better version of okay, what I was. It. Right. So you already mastered it. Yeah, so I was like, there's huh. nothing else. Actually, honestly, to look back on it, the only thing was that there was left to do was go to prison. Like, that was it. So yeah. you know what's weird is that totally fits his brand. Like, I know him. Mm -hmm. He will accomplish yeah. something and say, all right, I'm done that. What else I'm can gonna, I do? Yeah. It? As, as bizarre as that sounds. Yeah, no, that is. Totally that's the absolute truth. I'm Your a mindset. goal setter. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. once I achieve, I'm like, next one. Like, yeah. we perfect this thing. And there was nothing else for there to do. Like, um, So you stayed, you stayed in school. You graduated yeah. high school. Yeah, graduated high school. Only because my brother graduated. 
Like older, <laughs> my older brother You're Deron. Feeding with your brother. Yeah, yeah Deron. Uh, you know, I was a typical younger brother. Everything he did, yeah. I wanted to do. Like yeah. he, he broke his arm. I'm like, I need a cast. <laughs> I need a cast. Like I need a cast. Right now, I he got remember. glasses. I'm like, I need poor eyesight. Like everything he did, I wanted you to do. Him. Was um, he a guru to you, like growing up? Deron is my first success story. Really? He only so. ever wanted to be a pastor. He only ever wanted to be in the church. I mean, he mm-hmm. got into church really early. Like I'm talking like elementary school. And they would have to like force me to go, and he'd be ready. I'm like, you're making me look bad, dude. Like I'm trying to, <laughs> we gotta stick together here. Like yeah. cartoons, like the Jetsons are on. Like <laughs> watch cartoons. You want to go to church, but uh, all he ever wanted to do was that. He never talked about like, like uh, being famous or being rich or anything like that. And we didn't know. Like kids don't necessarily know that they're rich or poor or not. So we didn't really know. Like. Right. Um, we had a, like our mom was a really good mom. Like she would sit down with us, work with us on homework and like perfecting like our handwriting, all those things. Wow. And uh, so as I seen that he really got into church, he only ever wanted to do that. That and uh, or like a police officer. We used to watch this show, uh, Family Matters. Yeah. And because yeah. we didn't grow up with our dad in the house. <laughs> so Carl Winslow was our dad. We like, this is how nice. a dad's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so Deron just started, you know, he would preach. He started that. We were in like high school. He was like sixteen. Wow. He was like sixteen. I was like fourteen. I dragged all my friends to church. Really? And we're like, we're just like young kids smoking pot. Him. And they're like, dude, we want to go to church and we're smoking pot. I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> like, Barry, why to go put a shirt on? <laughs> we're going to church. But uh, he did everything he said he was going to do. And he, I mean, never worried about like his appearance, wow. anything like that. And I'm like. At such a young age. Yeah, I mean, have he, that. he knew it immediately. Yeah. And I, I always would try to take cues from him, but I was like, no, I got to be different than this. Yeah. And, but once he graduated, I was like, and I, I got my first test in life. I felt like uh, a lot of my friends were dropping out in the 12th grade. And I was like, well, that's pointless. Oh yeah, so like, I made it to 12th. <laughs> and I'm like, but I'm like my best friend at the time he drops out. And I'm like, dude, I can't drop out. Deron graduated <laughs> already. I can't like do this because like he's already in the church. He's got, like yeah. that yeah. God on his side. Like, <laughs> and, I, and then if I drop out, like then what? But uh, so yeah, then you know, graduated. And plus, I I had my first son uh, like a month after I graduated. After he graduated. Yeah. So uh, and then your second? Did you not have your second son right as you were? Uh, uh, a month before. It's actually his birthday today. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, happy he turns birthday. 11 today. 11. Yeah. What's his name? Let's uh, his name's Braden. Braden, happy Brayden. birthday. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> and and Bishop. him? Bishop. Well, yeah, right. his, yeah Bishop's the Bishop's oldest. Bishop's the older one. Yeah, yeah. Bishop's the oldest. Um, well, that and, must have been tough, though, right? A, a month after you were arrested or not a month before? Uh, had before. Bishop a month, a month after graduating school. After and graduating. Then, uh, Braden, May 4th, and I was arrested June 22nd. Uh, the Got same it. year, like a month and some change. Out. He's like a fresh baby. Yeah. Like in the in the house. How did they get you? How did they catch you? Uh, great police work. Oh, detective <laughs> work. <laughs> I like the honesty. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I feel like they did a, a great job. And one thing that I made sure to do, because uh, Bishop was so young, he was about five or six, and uh, he didn't understand like who he should be mad at. Mm. And whether or not he should like the police. And I'm like, they just did their job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like that's what they're supposed to do. That's kind of awesome. Yeah, they did their job. I'm not mad at police officers. Actually, I'm actually grateful for that entire like process. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't speak for everyone's situation. I know in mine, um, all of the officers were like upstanding people. They came and told Aww. 100% the truth. Like they didn't come in and make any stories right. up. Mm-hmm. They, Cause I, you know, we see it all the time on yeah. TV and stuff yeah. like that. They didn't come in and say any lies. Yeah. They came in and can only speak on what they like actually did or saw. So it, you know, going throughout the court process, it would look like I might end up winning this thing because they're up there, you know, the district attorney, their job is to like try to like prove yeah. the conviction. Win. And right, and the officers are like, "Oh no, we didn't see this, or we didn't see that, or we didn't do this, we didn't do that." Right, right, we found this there, yeah. And I was like, "Wow, like these guys are extremely like honest." (laughs) I I thought for sure they're going to go in there and like say we found thirty bricks of like whatever there. No, these guys were like really really honest people. Awesome. Yeah, but um, but yeah, yeah. So Braden was a was born about a month before. That's tough though. Right, it was a challenge, man. Not eight years, nine years. How long were you? Uh, I was away seven years. Away seven years. What was it like in there? Uh, dirty. Really? Yeah, I was in old grader for for like. Wow. They they sent everyone there, and it's like it's the craziest thing when you first go because a bunch of people like in a room probably this size, and they just keep bringing people, 
And it's to the point to where no one can sit down. Everyone has to stand oh my up. Gosh. And you're just packed in a space and you're just standing in a space. I mean, when the first day. Yeah, the, like well, the, the holding. When they send you to state when prison, you first, when you first get to state when prison. You get to state, right. Like the county jail is 32, but they're like yeah. a bunch of addicts. Yeah. In the, in the county jail, there's sure. a lot of addicts in there. Um, state prison, first day, they ask you like the craziest questions. Like the first three were like, what's your name? What gang affiliation do you have, if any? And like, where do you want your body sent? <gasps> and it's like, like, your body sent. Yeah, you like, get, like if once you get the body sent question, happens to you it's, in it's prison? on. You yeah, know, so it's it's, real. yeah, you go right into it's like survival mode. Yeah, immediately. Oh my god. Immediately. Um, and I was like twenty five or twenty six, so like you get right into survival mode, and you're like, okay. And they just tell you like, you know, you could fall down the stairs, or someone can murder you. Oh my god. And I was like, oh to no, I like <laughs> yeah, I was like no. uh Definitely not about to do any murdering over here. Like, no one's going to murder me I'm at all. Um, to do any murdering So over I was here. like, yeah. so I got into, like, working <laughs> out because, like, when you're walking down, I mean, Greater Fruit, uh, and if any viewers of, of you guys that have, have ever, like, visited there or seen pictures of it, it's a giant facility. I mean, each block, there's, like, 400 cells on mm. each block, and you can walk, like, you're just walking down the corridor, and it, you can see each yard. And now I'm seeing guys, their arms are as big as my head. I'm like, oh no, I gotta work out mm. like fast. <laughs> like I gotta get, I gotta get jacked fast because this is look. I need to be a formidable opponent in case somebody comes in here and like, wow. you know, tries to, you know, compromise my innocence. Doesn't like everybody that. test everybody? Yeah, there? Uh, you, not were you, really. Were you tested? You weren't tested. Uh, Even like, before you worked out, like once early, like once really early over the phone, like the phone. There's so many people and so little phones. Got it. And everyone wants to call home. Everyone has sure. like a situation or a girl or whatever the case is. Um, and when you're really young like that, you got that, you know, immortal syndrome, like you're invincible. And uh, I used to be so argumentative. I did not like no conflict resolution. And I learned that there, which is like, wow. like weird enough. I learned to just talk about a thing first instead of just be so like reactive where yeah. you just fly off the hinges yeah. and just go right to like, like physical violence. Um, so I learned that in like my first like few years, like two or three years. Uh, yeah. Do you, do you feel like you grew more in prison than prior? Yes. Let, let me read your words. This I, yeah. I bolded it because it's just great. You say when you were in prison, right? For all that time, I went through a major conscious improvement of mind and character. Yeah, man. It was. Uh, what does that mean? It's it's interesting because. Uh, I say this joke with people and they tell me, especially when people say like they went to college and stuff. And I'm like, you know, how some people go to like Penn State. I'm like, yeah, I went to State Penn. <laughs> and it takes them a second to get in. Like, well, I'm like, yeah, man. I'm like, uh, I grew so much. And I think it was because um, all the distractions were taken away from me. Mm. Like all the things that could have been like obstacles mm -hmm. uh, were out of my view. All of the titles. That's one thing I learned in there that, you know, going through this human experience, we all have titles. Once we become, once we have children, we become mothers or fathers. You know, we have, uh, we're sons, daughters, uh, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, um, employee, boss, all those things. And then once it's stripped from you, you have to now figure out who you are because you have, you attach mm -hmm. yourself to all those titles without them. And you're not in like actively playing those things. You're like a blank sheet and you're like, okay, who am I now that I can't play these roles? Like everything's suspended now. Um, so I had to like ask myself, like, who am I minus those things? There's no, there's no more like clothing. There's nothing for you to put on that you would normally in you. your regular life right. to say, okay, this is me. So when I would stare at myself in this little mirror, you get like a seven inch uh, plastic mirror. I couldn't recognize myself. Like at all. I mean, even when I look at old pictures of me from when I was away, I cannot recognize myself. It doesn't look anything like me. It's hmm. it's a wild thing. It's it's a crazy thing. But it gave you the chance to reinvent because you didn't know who you were at that point. Didn't, like not at all. Actually, it was it was to the point where it was like September 2017, and I was like totally done with the whole jail thing, and I was like, well, tell them get out of here. And for people that know it, like. You'll be if you tell a person you're going to be free, just not the, like the conventional way. That means like a person's planning on taking their life. So oh, it's like, no. or a person's telling you like if they got a life sentence and they tell you like, um, you know they're they're about to go home. 
they're talking about like they probably got diagnosed for cancer or something terminal or they're about to take their own life. So they know. So that's like a uh, like a hidden way of saying like I'm going home, I'm getting out of here. Because that's right. for some people it's just you too just much. Can't, yeah, it's too much. And I got to the point I was like, it's too much. I had like three years left, and I was like, I can't imagine doing another day. Wow. Like I was just like, how do you handle that? Uh, three years, even three years. You would think what happened a year in or a half a year in. I know, right? It was, it was wild. I just. Yeah. I feel like everything I had wanted to lose or didn't want to lose, sorry, uh, was gone. It was gone. It was gone. And I was like, you know what? Time to plan this thing. I planned the whole thing. I was like, I'm going to attack this officer. Oh, and my gosh. He was a, he's a nice man, too, which is crazy. Like, well, if I, I hope to see him eventually in time. Like, man, I was planning on doing this, too. And I know how he is. He had a joke. Like, man, I would have did this and that, too. Like, he's, he's a funny guy. He's a nice guy. He's just the biggest guy there. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to do that. And then I'm just do, do like a suicide by officer type thing. Yeah. So I was, I felt like it was kind of cliche. You genuinely like got to that point. Oh yeah, I was planning that thing out, man. Like, and I was like, you know, I'm going to do it the same day. Um, I started reading this book, Mastery of Destiny, by James Allen, and uh, I just showed it to her the other day. It's a massive book. It's just, it's like, that book is a compilation. Holy cow! Yes, Thick. that like book's got pages. wow. Yeah, yeah. But that book has never get through. That's that. a ton of books in. Well, it's like a compilation of his works, but that's one book within that. Um, and then I realized like, you know what, like my life is up to me. I get to choose it. Like, well, wait. Yeah. So wait, you went from literally trying to commit suicide by a officer cop, right. to reading this book. Like what? How, I was waiting like, for where, that shift to start. And you looked <laughs> over and you saw day. this book? Yeah. I was waiting for that shift to start because that shift started two to 10. So they do like, uh, I think it's like, uh, six to two and then it's. Is it six to two? I think it's like six to two or something like that. And then it's two to ten. Okay. And then ten to six. So he worked two to ten shift. And I'm like, they always make the rounds when they come in. And I'm like, cool. And I know him. He doesn't want you hanging anything in your in your cell. Like he doesn't want like your sweatshirt draped over anything, nothing up over your window, like a curtain, anything like that. So I'm like, I'm just gonna hang this up. I mean, he doesn't care what it is. He just doesn't want anything draped over mm-hmm. anything. So I'm like, I'm gonna drape my sweatshirt up. And in that unit, I was in the OSU at the time. Um, the They have like these closets in there. And I'm, I'm just going to wait in the closet. He's going to come in. And, you know, I'm fit now. I'm stronger now. Like, I'm like, cool. I'm, I'm going to like make this happen. And I'm waiting on this shift. And I'm like, it seemed like 2 o'clock took forever to get here. Hmm. So I'm just reading this book. But I get like trapped in the book. Oh and before I knew it, they're calling count time. Counts are like 4 o'clock. Like four or four thirty. So you number. missed the window. Yep. And was just dug into the wow. book and came out of that. Like it it was a seventy two hour process. It was wild. Seventy two hour process. And I was like, you know what? It started as a thing of revenge. Like everyone that left me, yeah, I'm gonna make them regret it. Got it. Like they're gonna they're gonna see how I am now and they're gonna yeah. be like, damn, we should have stayed. We should have stayed. Aww. Like he's he's so awesome. Man. Yeah, like, we should. I love that. We should have stayed around. Yeah. And I always like to think about like like a tree, right? Like once you cut the branch off, like how do you reattach it? Like can you ever reattach mm-hmm. it to be, because now the branch is going to die for sure because it's cut off from the source. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be the tree, and then anyone that wants to go, they can go. If I have to cut you off, either way, you're going to go. But survival with me is going to be different. Without me, is going to be different. Like, with me, we're going to go to the top. I want to make sure I push everybody to be their absolute best. Not everybody likes that, though, because not everyone wants to do that. It's, mm-hmm. it's scary. Yeah. It's scary going, like... And it like, hurts. Yeah, <laughs> Especially it. working out. To cut off. It's <laughs> a tough to the process. Yeah. I like to just get anyone to just do the best that you absolutely can do. Be the best version of yourself. And I think, like... I think it's in every one of us to be like better. Do you remember anything from that book that like stuck out in your brain, like any line or anything you read that was like, oh, wait a minute, maybe I don't want to do uh, this the, thing. To with paraphrase, this. I actually put it on the wall in the gym. It's on the gym. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that we are the doer of our deeds. And like based upon, just to like to sum it up, you you do everything that you do. Like we are characterized by the things that we do, by the deeds that we do. And every time we do a thing, we're actually adding to ourselves or taking from us. And like, you just have to like think consciously about the things that you actually do. And remember that you're going to be like characterized as that. Like a basketball player is not called a tennis player because that's not what they do. 
like they play basketball. So same thing. If you do a certain thing, like I, I like to tell people, like whether you lied before or and you, and you tell the truth now, you can't say that you haven't been a liar, like because you did that thing. Like so, that was one thing I got from it that, you know, I'm going to be characterized. I'm going to remember by the things like that we do that that I do in wow. life. So I always want to make sure that everything I do, I think about it thoroughly. I never let a person rush me through a process. I'm like, let me think about it first. And then I'll get back to you. And if there's like, hey, there's only a certain window of time, it's like, well, then cool. I don't want to be rushed. Like that's I feel so panicked. Yeah. Um, how are you? How are you using that quote to inspire the people? You put it on the wall. Yeah. So what it's are you pretty, hoping they pull from it? It's a pretty big quote, uh, but uh, <laughs> what I would ho- what I would hope that they get from it is uh, just to you know know that they are the ones that are actually in control of how their life is. That's one thing that I've really um, enjoyed about that book like it showed me like regardless of like what religion you believe in or whatever you have the free will to do whatever it is that you want to do if you blame it on another source that's you pointing the finger but at the end of the day you got a you have a mind you have a brain and you could have thought about those things and, and some people it's it's hard for them to think far down the line like you know uh, I used to hear this thing when I was a kid like what do you see yourself five years from now you don't even have the concept of time down mm-hmm. there right. to understand five years from now. As adults, we have to think five years from now, yeah. 10 years from now, 50. We have to think about those things. So what I would hope people get from that is like, think about everything that you do when you do that. Because some moves you make, you can't take it back. You know, like there's no mulligan on those, on those <laughs> type of things. That's a good one. There's no mulligan. Mm-hmm. like that quote. Yeah. Can I ask Carolina? Yeah. Um, so how do you two know each other? Are you like truth teller? Is there anything that you want to add to what Brandon's been saying or how do you want to, um, add? No. Cause he usually get covers all of the <laughs> points that I needed. Um, so I was, I initially went to built actually, um, another, uh, another gym, another gym. Yeah. Right. Um, where Brandon was teaching. Yes. Training. And I had been training there for a while first time I ever had stepped foot in a gym ever um and I had been with another trainer um and then I stopped training with him and I had seen how he trained and I was like this is a very intelligent person <laughs> let me start um <laughs> uh good truth yes very truthful um <laughs> I was like let me start training with him because i see the results that he gets people and then he also was just like an incredible person that I just enjoyed being around so we just became friends throughout the training process and then um he started well he was telling me that he was going to start his gym and everything like that and I kind of was just along I just kind of helped out where I could and now I kind of do a lot of the (laughs) the major stuff the (laughs) training's easy yeah so he trains people I do the majority of the other stuff. He trains people. He does the marketing, I would say, you do more of. Uh, so if, you put, if you call posting videos, posting, he sure. po- yeah, it's he does social like social media, media stuff. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. And it's I do like out. all the like back of house stuff. Yeah. Do you, do you see him as kind of like, and this sounds like such a big word, guru, yeah. but honestly, a guru, they say, you can be your own guru as long as you've ever done anything for anyone else oh, wow. without expectation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I feel like everyone is sort of their own guru. I mean, for everyone's sure. pretty much done something without expectation, right? Yeah. Well, he's, yeah. I tell him all the time, like, he's such an inspirational yeah. person. Um, like, I'm always, like, just being around him, you're literally driven. You're like, okay, I have to step up in this area. <laughs> I just have to, to keep work up. On this. Step yeah. up to keep up. Because it's, it's easy. It's, it's easy to feel like you're not doing enough because he always feels like he's not doing enough. And yeah, I tell him great. all the time, I'm like, you well. do the most. Um, but he's always like, no, I, I, could, I could do this more. I could, I could do more in this area. And I'm like, okay, I... I am the laziest person. This is like, <laughs> yeah. It's, um, but it's inspiring versus making you feel inadequate, ins- right? Like no, it's, yeah. yeah he, he's able to educate people without making them feel dumb, yeah. um, which is, I think, really difficult. That's hard to do. Especially yeah. if, you, if you know that you Just have. Work at it. Yeah. Yeah. If you know that you have, like, yeah. the knowledge there right. already. Like, right. it's easy to be like, oh, you don't know this? Like, okay, well, I do, and I'm going to be on like my high horse because of that but he's like oh no this is what this is and if you don't understand it i'll explain it in a different way so you do and it's just like very yeah 
We get along very well. Ah, he's <laughs> very good at connecting with people. Exactly. Yeah. That's the heart of it, right? You're, yeah. you're a trainer, but he was human first. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Which, and and I, I know he's a driven human, and he's, he, he's a good person once wants to have good people around him. Yes. So clearly you're doing a great job or he wouldn't yes. have you. He, he, okay. he wants to be exposed to people that can not only he can elevate, but they can elevate his yes, world. Absolutely. absolutely. That's like a major truth uh, for sure. So like, all right, I got to get to Morphed. I mm-hmm. want to find out how you got there, <laughs> how the whole thing started. I know, I know you had a bunch of people you were training, but like, how did you go from like being a trainer to Morphed? Uh, so I learned about it. While, what is well, I learned about too? training while I was away. Uh, one of the corrections officers, she had seen me like working out in the yard. Right. And she was like, hey, you should be a trainer. I'm like, to do what, though? She's like, like to train people. I'm like, train them to do what? She's like, work out. <laughs> I'm like, like train athletes. I didn't know people did, like people worked out like regular people. It's a good I, job, yeah. Yeah, I never paid attention to that <laughs> before. I was like in the streets. I'm like, I don't know anybody with a, that's a personal trainer. So I I start to get into it, and uh, one thing I I learned just in my experience, like once you set your mind to do a thing, I learn I noticed that everything like comes to you that you need to get this thing done, and I noticed like pe- like there would be workout magazines on the on the unit, or people would say, hey, uh, can you show me how to do this move? I just noticed all these things were coming to him like. What's going on? And then I called home one day and I'm uh, talking to my youngest son's mom. She's like, hey, I've seen this thing on personal training and I ordered it for you. And they're going to send the books to the jail. I was like, wow. She's like, yeah, they're going to be there in three days. And it's so much science involved in it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, bet. Like, because I love science. Mm-hmm. It was like one of my favorite oh, really? subjects in school. I love science. I love like, just science is like a major thing to me. Science, history. Yeah, probably like science first, history second. Um so much science involved in it and I was like cool I think I'm a I think I can do this thing and then she had told me about uh Clayton Mm -hmm. and said hey this guy he just got out of prison from doing all these years in prison he started his own gym I'm like so it can be done it can be done I'm like proof of concept right I'm like okay another game changer another mentor right I'm gonna do this (laughs) thing I'm gonna gonna do this and this was like 2016 2017 she's like yeah I talked to him about you he said like soon as you come home to come see him and I was like, cool. And uh, so I'm trying to think of names I would make, name my own gym. And it was like, I was coming up with the corniest names, <laughs> like the corniest stuff. Like what? Like what? Give us uh, some. Like Pure Fit and bull crap like that. Beef, <laughs> beef Fit. And I'm like, oh, this beef is fit. I was like, this is corny. Yeah. And I thought like, I always like acronyms. Yeah. So like, can I make an acronym and then make it sound good? And uh, so I thought of. I thought of morphed because of the change. Like mm-hmm. I was like, there's there's a change that happens uh, in everyone when you start to make that choice to do something different. And I've been a major Sylvester Stallone fan since I was a kid. So if you've ever watched all the Rockies, his body changes and mm-hmm. each one's physique changes. I was like, oh, this guy's the man. Like, you can do mm-hmm. this. So I've seen like, okay, there's always like this this like morphing process. And I was like, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna do morph. And I was like. But how many things are going to have morph out there? So what if I made like morphed, and but made it with a T? And what I what it stands for is uh, motivating others with respect, persistence, honesty, and trust. I never so knew that. That's what it actually wow. stands for. Yeah, it's a really long. Mike never knew it. But yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> um, so cool. Say it one more time. Motivating so, yeah, others. Motivating others uh, with respect, persistence, honesty, and trust. And so that's what it it's actually perfect. stands for. Preach. Um, I love it. And so that's why I'm, I'm that way. When I meet people mm-hmm. uh, like Mark, I show everyone a ton of love. Uh, and I appreciate everyone's time. Like I always lead with respect first. Like I always give respect. I'm not a person that thinks like if a person gives me disrespect to give it back, I just know not to be around them anymore. Like, and just like the honesty part is just, we only get so many breaths on, on this planet. Why waste it doing that? Like, why waste it? And I think one of the reasons I'm a quality time person is because I've given so much of my time away, given over 60,000 hours of my time mm-hmm. away to prison. Mm-hmm. Why am I going to waste it, like, being dishonest, waste my breath being dishonest? Like, for all that, I'm just going to use it constructively and build and help everyone else build, like, at the same time. Wow, so, I have yeah. one question. So, like, hmm. do you ever have, and we're going to have to stop in a second just for switching the cards but so do you ever 
um, have road rage? <laughs> like, what happens if someone cuts you off in traffic? Are you so zen? No, yeah. I've beeped my horn once. I'm so chill. I'm just like, if they beep their horn, that's them. Same. I never let a person's behavior alter mine. Like that's I have control of that. Like wow. I'm, and I'm, and I think everyone has it. Just most people don't want to use it. Um, our emotions are given to us to use them. They're not to use us. So I'm an emotionally controlled person. I never allow a person's behavior to like to change me emotionally to where I react based on their reaction. Right. Like. They control you. Right, absolutely. I'm not, I'm not a puppet. I've been yeah. that before. That's what that life is before. You're trying to live up to a rep, like a, uh, like your reputation. That's what everyone else expects you to be. So if they expect you to be all these things, you try to like feel that for them. And it's just like being like a puppet, honestly. So no, I never I never get road reads. I never I never get like out of pocket, as we say. Like someone like me came to you and you're like and I was like, Look, I want you to get me ripped. Mm-hmm. Like I need to be ripped. I want I want a thigh gap. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I need a I want a six I've never had a six back in my life. It's hard for women. It's it's, it's hard for women. So like what like what would you say? Like you gotta I'll tell you the things to do. And cause I have people like this that totally disregard the thing that I tell them, like, hey, would you go to the doctor because you're sick about or you have an illness or something and then totally disregard the stuff they're doing, like you're wasting my time. Like, don't waste my time because there's going to be someone that really wants to be in your position that's going to take it serious. Right. And then you're taken away from what I actually know. Like, that's not like any respect to me. I know this stuff. You hired me for a reason. Like, so do the things that I tell you to do. And it's wild because they'll see the other people that abide by the stuff that I tell them to do. And they're like, oh, man, their, their results look amazing. I'm like, right, because they listen. <laughs> they, like, they listen to what I say. So I'm hard on I'm leaning everyone. I'm like, hey, get on the ball. Because at the end of the day, if, like, if you come to me for training and you don't listen to the stuff I say, when your family sees you, they're going to be thinking that I'm ripping you off. Right, it's your reputation. My name's on the line. Now. Yeah. And that's one. So the reason why I said history, I'm a major fan of history, is because you're learning about people that are no longer alive. Mm. So I'm like, I need to make sure my name is good because mm. I'm the doer of my deeds. I got to mm-hmm. make sure that what I'm doing for for Brandon DeShield's name, like far outlives me, like for sure. I'm going to be remembered by those things. So if I'm a you know bull crapper or, or scam artist when it comes to training, people are going to remember me for that. And I don't want like my children, or my grandchildren, to be moving around on the earth. And they're like, oh yeah, we knew your grandfather. He was a he was a scammer. He was this. I'd rather people talk highly of him. Wow. Like he was like he was a great person. Like regardless of what he'd been through, that's awesome. He, he turned it around. I think two people really need discipline. Like if someone yeah. comes to you and they haven't been able to discipline themselves, like especially me after all these years, and you give them that, you know, well you have to do this. Sorry, it's that's tough. the line. Like I think people actually crave that. Do you think, Mark? Yeah, because they can't. Provide it themselves, right? I mean, it's the difference right. between motivation and discipline. Everybody has the motivation. I want to lose weight. I want to look good in this whatever I'm wearing. I want to live better, live longer. I want to be able to play with my kids. But, you know, at, at 4 o'clock in the morning, it, that motivation goes out the window. If yes. it's raining and it's cold, and you have to get in your car and you have to go to the gym and do it again tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. Or twice, they're twice in a day tough. like you, or Mark. Or twice in a day. Yeah. He was my trainer. Like, yeah. like I love that yeah. mindset. Yeah. I remember the first day I met him, yeah. I was coming back from shoulder surgery, wandered back into my old gym. He had started working during those months I was out, introduced myself. He's like, yeah, come on in anytime. Try it back out because I wanted to see how it worked again, how my shoulder would keep up again back into those they're pretty intense workouts. Yeah. And um, I, I went home and I told my wife, I'm like, yeah, they got a new guy built. He's the nicest guy. And I was like, I can't wait to go. And then fortunately for me, my time that I would go, Brandon would be there. It was, his, it was on his schedule. So I got a daily dose. We talk about yeah, history. Like we time, talk about the yeah. ancient Greeks. We talk about, we some, talk- about, yeah, we talk about some wild stuff. <laughs> what, what are you reading right now? Uh, I just got, it's, it's a book called The Master Key System. Um, I've yeah. read it like three, four times. The Master already. Key System. Yeah. Um, it's actually like a course. Okay. Um, so between that and I'm taking another certification for, uh, I always get new certifications to broaden my horizon on like, or my education on training. I'm doing a glute certification now. So to help women build their butts. Yeah, the Master Key System is a book that I've read a few times, um, but you're supposed to read it like one, but there's 26 parts in it, like, or chapters. You're supposed to be one part a day for the entire week straight. And then you move on to the second part. And it gives you these exercises 
in the book so you can actually work on like your imagination process right the one thing about some people they just lack like creativity they lack that it, as kids we have it we have that thing it's why they can believe mm -hmm. everything and they mm -hmm. believe they can be whatever they want to be and we tell them you can be whatever you put it. your mind to right. And then somewhere along the process, as we become adults, we forget that. Right. And we think we can only be one thing. I'm going to ask you something. As a father, yeah. having gone through everything you've gone through, I'm constantly preaching to my son about positivity, about mm -hmm. reaching his potential, about not letting, uh, controlling his emotions, all of that yeah. stuff. What are you telling your kids? Look, dad went through this. Here's where dad is now. What, what are you telling them? What are you... How are you a guru or a game changer to your kids right now? Because they're at a good age yeah. where they're going to start processing what you're saying. Yeah. Um, I did this thing with them when I first got back. Um, I drove them through uh, Kennett Square, through the back roads of Kennett Square. And uh, that's where I grew up at. That's why I, I got arrested. That was a ton of stuff that I got into out there. Uh, some people say, you know, you got, I got my name there. Um, on those back roads out there are some really large homes. And this was like when COVID was going on. So we're just driving around. We, we look up like million dollar homes in Kennet. And we just pull up on the back roads and see, I'm like, look at this house. And they're like, yeah, I'm like, look, it costs this many millions of dollars. Like, yeah, I'm like, would you like to live in a house like this? And they're like, yeah, I'd like to live in a house like this for sure. I'm like, it's a big house. They're <laughs> like, it is a big house. And I'm like, it's got a lot of rooms in it. And like, it's got a ton of rooms. I'm like, right. And then I drove them to, it's like right on the edge of Westchester, but it's on a back road around, around the nursing home. It's uh, called the Chester County Prison. It's the prison. And one name for prison is the big house. So I drove him by it. I'm like, hey, see that? That is the prison. That's also a big house. And that also has a lot of rooms in it. Now, you have a choice to make. Whatever choices you make, one can, some choice can lead you to live in that multi-million dollar house where it's going to be you and your family. Or you can go to this one right here. Those choices are going to lead you to come right here. And this is still going to be a big house. Some of your family members might be in here mm -hmm. also. But it's only going to be guys. Mm -hmm. It's all guys in here. You can't really, like, there's no Christmas. There's no none of that stuff. Regardless of what they give you, like, there's, it's not going to be like being home and spending time. So you have choices to make. I'm like, you're like, I never force them to make a choice. I never force them. So I'm like, think about it. If they say, dad, I don't know. I'm like, well, I don't know is an answer, but it's not an answer I'm going to accept. Think about it. Take your time. And there's no wrong answer. And then once they think about it, they give me an answer. I'm like, there we go. And all that exercise was just so they know that they have the ability to think. You have the right to think. Um, so I never want them to, like, focus on, like, me. Mm -hmm. Or I'm like, this, this world is, is about you. Without you, this world doesn't exist because you're not here to experience that thing. Just use all your time wisely. Wow. If you want to smoke, go ahead and smoke. Just know there's no benefit. If you want to drink, you can drink. Just know that there's no benefit to that. You'll never win. The more you drink alcohol, the sicker you get. Your night doesn't get better, it's get worse. So I'm like, you can do all those things. Just know I don't have to support that. And once you become an adult, you don't have to think about things. Especially you know, when I talk to Bishop, he's so much older. I'm like, yo, you eventually get to a point to where you have a family. Mm -hmm. And you got to ask yourself, do I buy jeans that are like 500 bucks? Or do I buy jeans that are like 50 bucks or 20 bucks? Because if you ask me... Which one covers your butt better? <laughs> None. They both do the same thing. Like I'm like, and no one cares. If your friends only care about how much your clothes cost, then they're probably not the right friends. You need to, because they're what they're trying to do is get you caught in this superficial world. And you know, raising young black men, we get trapped in a thing, thinking mm -hmm. like we have to be a certain way. Mm -hmm. We have, unfortunately, music is like the cultural guide for us. We don't necessarily see people that look like us on TV unless we're like a rapper or an athlete or, you know, we're bundled up in police raids from drugs or some sort of crime wave. Um, TV shows show us as criminals and no one you, you might see one. We might see one like light skinned black guy, but you never really see us in a role of success or father figure roles, you don't really see us. And that's why I said Carl Winslow was our dad, because you didn't see that. No one, and then every home that you went to, you didn't see it. Um, so what I try to make sure to do with them is just like tell them like, look, these are the real, I'm extremely truthful when it comes to, I'm talking like brutally honest to them. When I would go on, when they would come visit me in the prison, I would tell them like, yeah, I just got done getting naked. 
And they be like, what? I'm like, yep. Every time I come see you out here on a visit room, I got to get naked. And then when I leave here, I got to get naked again. They're like, what? They're, like, they're looking like, what? I'm like, yep. And there's no women in there. It's all guys. All guys. You got to bend over. You got to spread your butt open so they can see in there. I tell them all that stuff. I'm like, just know that if you make the same choices I made to come here, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get that same thing. And guess who's not going to be here with you? Like, I'm not. And even if I was, because there's fathers and sons in there, mm. I'd have to stand there and watch another man tell you to do that stuff. And I can't say a word. That's like, I can't, I can't do anything. Um, so the, a lot of advice I give them is about the things I know that they're going to face in life and letting them know, like, you have the ability to choose. You have the ability to think. Just do that. But don't do anything that hinders that. Don't drink yourself into stupidity. Don't smoke yourself into stupidity. That's how we're fooled into thinking like you have to be black to do those things and then to dress that way. Like you don't, that doesn't mean that you're any more black or any less black. Why don't you just be a person? Mm. Your skin is what you were born with. I didn't get to choose what skin I was born with. I didn't get to choose what skin you were born with. And I didn't even care about that. I just wanted you to be healthy. That was it. And have, and be offered the same thing. I'm like, you guys are offered so much more now. I mean, anybody that thinks they have it hard now, any, any, a brown skinned person that thinks they have it hard now. Imagine if it was like the twenties. Imagine nineteen twenties. Imagine hundred years ago. Imagine how hard they had it. So I'm like, think about it. Like they, they actually did some work. They had to do community work before they can even like get a job. They had to band together. Now it's like let everybody smoke themselves and drink themselves in excess. So one thing I I preach to them a lot is like your family unit, and then your network of people, your people you have around. If your friends. I, I tell Bishop this all the time. If your friends aren't talking about making a hundred million dollars, you got the wrong friends. <laughs> you got the wrong. He's like, well, my good. You got the wrong friends. If they're only talking about getting high and playing a game, where's that get you at ten years from now? I'm like, just know there's a sixteen year old kid somewhere right now, doing everything possible, everything possible to be a millionaire by seventeen, or everything possible to be a millionaire by eighteen, while you guys are playing a video game, bull crapping. So wow. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm I'm pretty hard, and I tell them they owe me. <laughs> yeah, they owe you. They owe me. How so? Uh, life. I gave you life. Got it. I. I'm like, hey, I gave you life, man. You're here. You, you look at the sky. You see the ground. Touch you touch your skin. See this stuff. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to experience this <laughs> without me. Like, and with uh, now that I gave you life, you owe me now. Now do something with the life I gave you. Like, that is it. That's what you owe me. You owe me that and a Porsche. I'm a Porsche, <laughs> I'm a Porsche fan. I love Porsche. But not in that order. That's yeah, fine. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's, like, honestly, that's, like, my thing to them. I'm like, you got, they, I'm like, they know me. They know, like, dad's serious. Yeah. Do something with the, I didn't, I didn't go through, I'm like, especially Bishop, dude, I was 19. I mean, you know how hard it was to raise a kid at 19 and the minimum wage was, like, seven bucks, mm. seven fifty. I'm like, wow, I was paying, like, seven fifty. I'm like, like jobs, like I think Wawa now is like like fifteen bucks and a sign on bonus. I'm like, dude, it's like twice the amount of money. Hmm. I'm like, but I had to do that with you. Yeah. So I'm like, now do something with what was given to you. Take it in. It's like the story of the men with the talents coming out of the Bible. You know, like you were given something. Hmm. Now make it. Take it and multiply. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you don't multiply it, now I have a reason to be frustrated with you. Because I gave you something that I, that I know is precious. I know the value of it. And even if you don't, just listen to what I said and go do it anyway because I'm your dad. Like, I've lived this thing before. And I feel like that's our role as parents to, like, experience the things in the world and come back and say, hey, this is what I found out there. Because other than that, like, if, if, we, if they can't learn anything from us, like, what use are we to them? You know, it's funny. I always tell my son, it's your accountability to be a better father than I am. Yeah, absolutely. I'll do right. me. Yeah, I'll do me exactly. Be, be a better version. Like I'm up for that challenge. Like for like for sure. Because while you're raising yours, you'll never stop being mine. You'll never stop being my my son. My right. son, no matter how old you are. So I can still see you doing things for your sons. In regardless if you went and bought them like like two ice cream cones, I'll just bring like a gallon of ice cream to your house. Like there you go. Like <laughs> I went. Yeah, right now I bought them more ice cream and you bought yours. I went. You know what I'm like I like stuff like that because one, it's fun, it's competitive, and it shows. I'm like, hey man, like I st I love you enough to tell you the truth. I man. love you enough to like never stop doing this thing for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. It's good stuff. Oh, I don't want to stop talking to you guys. This yeah, has this been awesome. so amazing. Thank like you both I so have much learned fun. so much from both of you. Like. Thank you. Man. And Brandon, Inspiring. like, I got to find out. I got to come work out with you, I think. You should. <laughs> you got to we'll you tell, every, tell the listeners 
How do we find your gym? All right. So if you go on to, you can go to Google and you could literally Google Morphed, M-O-R-P-H-T, uh, fitness. It'll pop up. We're the only one with that actual name. So you'll see Morph, but you won't see Morphed with a T on the end. Um, Instagram is Morphed underscore fitness. Um, the website is uh, imorph.com. So the letter I, M O R P H T dot com. And everything is on there. I designed the website. So it's really, really simple because I don't want things that I have to like search through. It's everything is like right there. It's like super simple to get onto. And uh, if it's a group training thing, everyone gets a free week, like a free seven class. It's not like a Monday to Monday mm. thing, like seven classes. Nice. Because throughout, wow. throughout a week, like, you know, life might happen. And then we're not open Sunday, so how would you get the seventh day? So, yeah, uh, so, yeah, and it's it's a great experience. It's a great community of people to build. That's one thing I really love about group training, that you can literally put people that would never, they could be neighbors and might not even know it. Oh, yeah. Um, or uh, one thing I've, I've really loved to be able to see is one person could be looking for one thing, and there's another person there that says, oh, I know a person like that. And they can they click up, and they help each other. I'm like, that's community right there. Like that To me, that's mm-hmm. a beautiful thing. And who knows if this would have even happened had they not been in this place right now. Like So, yeah, I like stuff like that. So is it ju- just you training, or is there a bunch of trainers? Uh, it's like, just what's... myself. I just brought a guy on, like, yesterday, a uh, uh, Hispanic guy, because it's a big Spanish community where I'm at. Mm-hmm. Um, so he just came on board yesterday. He's going to be, uh, be training, just helping him gain some experience and gain confidence in, like, talking to people. Because that's one thing about training. Like, you have to be comfortable with talking to people. Oh, yeah. Um, one thing I tell, like, every trainer that I've ever met that is, like, they're in the gym and they're shy, I'm like, they came here – the people came here for you to tell them what to do. There's no sense of you being shy. Like they walked in the door expecting you to tell them like what workout to do. Other than that, it's going to be standing here, but also have the love and appreciation for them. Cause you can have the best workout, but if you don't have anybody to do the workout, then it's just something that you have in your head or wrote in your phone or jotted down on a piece of paper. So it's like a love, love thing. Mm-hmm. Like they showed up for you. Now you show up for them. So, yeah. And so what kind of classes are there? Is it just lifting weights or like what? It's what? a good mix. It's yeah. just like uh, a mix of whatever, however I'm feeling at the time. It's just. Oh, uh, that's awesome. It so it's always up, different? It's always different. That's cool. I'm a major like Jay-Z fan. So he, uh, I've seen as a kid that he never writes any of his music. He just goes in the studio and he play music and he just makes platinum albums. And I was like, well, if he can do that, <laughs> I can do this with a workout. It has to be like able to be done. And mm-hmm. I just. I freestyle. You That's never I repeat? I never do the same uh-huh. thing. I just For how I, many years now? Uh, it's, I've been doing this for... I started in prison, actually. And uh, funny enough, the prison adopted my program because there was nothing in there. And so myself and a friend of mine, uh, we call him Duck and uh, Joey. So I went to the facility and was like, hey, we need a place to work out at besides the yard because like, it's bullcrap. Let's start like a fitness program. So I take up my certifications and they're like, hey, you look like you know what you're doing. Let's do it. And they're like, you can only have, they're like, the gym can only hold like X amount of people. And so I get that many people and they're like, hold on, you can't have like a hundred something people in the gym. It's prison. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, all right. And they're like, you can have 50. You have 50 people in the gym. <laughs> and I'm like, cool, let's do it. So I actually started in there. Then the, the gym, I mean, the facility actually was like, you know what, we're going to add it to our programs. So then you actually have to sign up to get on it, but I'm the person that uh, like says who can come to it and who can't come to it. And I just got two of my closest friends that were really into fitness. I'm like, hey, you guys want to run this program with me? And they were cool with it. Them and an older guy, he had like maybe 30, 40 years in prison. So it was like, you know, it got him on board for the people that's in there, that's been in there with him, that trust him. Because other than that, we just look like some crazy guy. They used to call me uh, the the guy that flies doing push-ups. I used to do these crazy push-ups in there. Um, or study. Everybody calls me like study big. Um, because study all B. I would do is study. <laughs> study. <laughs> study B. Study and study. That's all I want to yeah. do. I don't watch TV. I don't do anything. I just yeah. want to read and learn. Um, so did that there. Came home 2020 um, in in the middle of COVID and just started training and just been doing that since then. So when I go to your class, do I pick up weights? Do I have bands? Do I'll I, tell you like, do I hey, run? Do, am I on treadmills? You'll, no. you'll see my wheels turning because yeah. I'm like, yeah. I grab this. Yeah. And while I'm telling you what to grab, I'm thinking about what I want you to do. So there's like a myth like I'll do. I'll tell you like grab weights or I might just say, hey, just use your body weight right now. And 
do this, 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 and this this many times, or I might change the numbers up throughout the rounds. And but while you're doing that, I'm already on to the next thing that I want to do. And then while you're doing the next thing, I'm on to the next thing. So I'm always like thinking about something throughout the time. It just depends on how creative you are. It depends on how the workout is. But you also have to assess like who's in your class too. Right. Like so, you always have to see like if you have some heavy hitters in your class, just know like have that you can do the same workout just have them do something a little heavier right we do an, a free assessment with everyone everyone mm-hmm. that comes into the gym they get a free assessment so i know about you right i know what your life's i know if you're married kids i, I know all those things so you get that personal approach so now you're never going to be left out of a workout or feeling like oh i can't do this because even if they're fine with it oh no no problem i have a problem with it i don't want you to feel left out i want you to you're a part of our community wow. and i'm not gonna leave you behind that's amazing. Yeah. Who's your greatest success story? Besides, or what is my greatest success with, story? With uh, a person, a, client? That, a first client that you've mm-hmm. trained. And don't say Mark, you know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You look good. I fair. would say, <laughs> I would say Emily. Okay. Emily, uh, she is a breast cancer survivor. We were just talking um, Tuesday and being a breast cancer survivor, there's so she had a certain procedure done, so it was, it was, I guess it was hard for her to do overhead movements and chest presses and push-ups. To see her go from not being able to do that thing to be able to press or do push-ups or, or do push uh, chest press to be able to do that with twenties and twenty fives, I'm like, and she just told me Tuesday, she's like, this is my therapy, this is where I go because it doesn't look like it, but I could be struggling in a day mentally and this is my way place to get away she moved from iowa over here and she she comes into the gym like i mean so consistently but to have a thing like that for me to be able to see that those are the things i say i'm doing a great job my brandy you're doing good because this person is like even if i only had her to train the fact that she went from not being able to do a thing to doing that thing i'm like that is what that you is changed about. your life. Yeah, you like really her, did. You changed your life. Like her for sure, and probably Lindsay. Yeah, probably, they were probably my second. Lindsay's a mother of twin boys, uh, training for her first bodybuilding show. Looks amazing. Hmm. There were girls that asked her what they thought she was in in college. Oh my! <laughs> and she's like, I graduated in like two thousand. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but probably her too, because I mean, they, to use her words, she never thought that she would ever be doing that. You know, you're a mom of two and you're in your forties and you, you have like, you look like that. <laughs> like, it's, it's a wild That's thing. Probably just those two, but yeah. Emily's is more of a, you know, thing that, you know, it's a thing people can't necessarily see. And Lindsay's is a thing that you can see. Like you can see Lindsay, like physically, it's more of a, you, you have to see her to know, like she made these changes. Emily, you'd have to know what she went through. And then see what she's doing now to see like she's made a change. That's fantastic. I love that. And I wanted to say also on May 15th, we're starting uh, virtual training classes for anyone that's too far. Oh, yeah. So in your break time, go ahead. Just log on. It's going to be, there's going to be like a morning class and like an evening class, right? Yes. Yeah. See, it's like a, it's only 30 minutes too. It's like, so when I first started training, you, you can get a great workout in 30 minutes. It just has to be done a certain way. Like just running for thirty minutes, or even just doing body weight stuff, it'd do some things, but nothing like adding weights in. So I like to do a good mix of weight and body weight, um, and it, it really gets the job done. And, and then play with your food through your website. Yep, yep, you can sign right okay. on the website. And yeah, that's good to know. The good thing I like about that is I can always have people like go in and show me what's in their refrigerator in their cabinets. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you see the success. Oh God, People probably aren't even that. thinking I'm going to do that. I'm like, oh, show no. me what's in yeah. your cabinets. They're, live, they're like so live me. Zoom classes. So nice. yeah. Be, yeah. yeah, show me the cabinet. Show me the refrigerator. All right, let me because I want people to move. I treat group training like personal training. If if members don't show up for a week, she either I either text her and say, hey, email these people and see where they're at or I'll suit them a text. I'm like, it's, it's like if you booked personal training sessions with me and I haven't seen you. I'm like, hey, you have these sessions booked. Do you have COVID or something and somebody passed away? Like, no, okay, well then get your button. Get jam. your button. Yeah, I probably say it a little harder than that, but <laughs> they, know, they know me well enough to know, like, he just, you know, he, he, I care enough because I don't want them, you know, the system to just be taking your money and you're not getting anything out of it. That's awesome. So, yeah. Some people might just be like, well, I got paid. And, you know, like a lot of the big name places. Yeah, that yeah just want but not you. And they don't want people to show up. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, not, it's not money. 
It's not a money thing. Oh my gosh. You guys have been amazing. Please come back. Hey, thank sometime. you. I appreciate it. Yeah, yes. for sure. This has been appreciate fantastic. It. Like, yeah. it doesn't even feel like an hour and oh, 42 minutes has gone wow. by. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's been great. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you. Wow, thank you.